So how does changing the temperature of a mixture of substances affect the equilibrium of those substances? Well, first of all, we sort of know, kind of, I guess, we, we remember, we kind of learn the fact that if we have an endothermic reaction and we increase the temperature, then that will increase the equilibrium constant. And we know that if we have an exothermic reaction and we increase the temperature, then that will cause a decrease in the equilibrium constant. But we can actually explain this uh, this phenomenon, these these results, using Le Chatelier's principle. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can do that via a general endothermic reaction. So here we've just got a general reaction. Doesn't matter what the reactants and products are. However, all that matters is that it is endothermic. Now, let's say I've got a container. I've got all my my substances A, B, C, and D at equilibrium. I've got all my substances at equilibrium, and what I do is I increase the temperature. So initially, we're at equilibrium, and therefore the concentration fraction is equal to the equilibrium constant. Then I increase the temperature, and what that does is that increases the equilibrium constant. And if we increase the equilibrium constant, then what that means is that the concentration fraction has now become less than the equilibrium constant. They were previously equal, we increased this one, and therefore we have this as the result. Now if this is the if this is the result, we know that the concentration fraction is equal to the concentrations of all our products. This is just in a very general sense, divided by the concentration of our reactant. So if we want to increase the concentration fraction such that it is equal to K, then what we're going to have is an increase in the amount of products and a decrease in the amount of reactants. So we're going to of reactants. So if our concentration fraction is less than K, that implies that a net forward reaction needs to occur to reach equilibrium. So for this analysis of the way temperature affects equilibrium constants, we can see that increasing the temperature of an endothermic reaction at equilibrium will cause a net forward reaction to occur. However, we can also explain this, this result using the Chatelier's principle. So if we rule a line down the middle and look at it from a new point of view. So if we so we've increased the temperature and increasing the temperature is basically the same as increasing the amount of energy. So if we increase the temperature of this equilibrium system we're just increasing the amount of energy in this system. So if we increase the amount of energy then Le Chatelier's principle states that the system will partially oppose this increase. That means the system of reactants and products tries to decrease the amount of energy floating around. So if the system wants to decrease the amount of energy going around, well, we know that endothermic reactions absorb energy endothermic reactions absorb energy. And so if we have a net forward reaction, if we have a net endothermic reaction, then that endothermic reaction will absorb energy and therefore decrease the temperature of what's going on around it. The system tries to decrease the temperature of reactants and products and it does that by absorbing some energy. It absorbs some energy from just heat and translates that heat energy into the energy of the bonds. And that that absorbance of energy via an endothermic reaction will cause a decrease in temperature. So a net forward reaction, because the forward reaction is endothermic, then the net forward reaction will absorb the energy, will absorb the extra energy that's now floating around. And by absorbing that extra energy, it will decrease the temperature. It's taking that energy away from the temperature and putting it into the bonds and, and all the stuff that goes with endothermic reactions. So the net forward reaction will absorb energy and therefore decrease the temperature. And the same can be done with exothermic reactions. So we now have two ways 
to explain the effect of temperature on the equilibrium of a reaction. We can explain it via the effect of temperature on the equilibrium constant, or we can explain it using Le Chatelier's principle. So if we had an exothermic reaction, we could say, well, how come when we have an exothermic reaction, how come heating that exothermic reaction reduces the K value? Well, if the K value is reduced, then we're going to see a net back reaction. And so if we heat an exothermic reaction, then uh, if we heat, uh, sorry, if we cool, so that means if, the, if increasing the temperature reduces the equilibrium constant, then that means reducing the temperature will increase the equilibrium constant. So that makes sense. If we cool down everything involved in an exothermic reaction, then the system will counter this according to Le Chatelier's principle by reheating the system. And we know that forward reaction, a forward reaction, an exothermic reaction, releases heat. So if we cool down an exothermic reaction, that will promote a forward reaction and therefore increase the equilibrium constant because the forward reaction releases heat. If we cool it down, then the system tries to heat things back up again by undergoing a net forward exothermic reaction. So that is how temperature affects equilibrium. Uh, if, we look, if we're if we if we're going to analyse that via Le Chatelier's principle, that is how it happens. That is how the temperature causes a shift in equilibrium. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can apply this in order to get the most out of a certain reaction. If we want to increase the yield of a reaction, so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. So this reaction here is exothermic, meaning we have a negative change in enthalpy, we have a net energy release. And so what we want, we've got a container containing hydrogen, oxygen and water all at equilibrium. Now how can we ensure, what we want to do is we want to ensure this reaction goes to completion. We want to ensure that we produce as much water as we can and that we use up as much hydrogen and oxygen as we can. So how can we do this? What we want is we want three ways to maximize yield. So the first way is we know that if we keep taking away the, uh, the, the product of a reaction then the system will counter this according to Le Chatelier's principle by trying to produce more reactant. So that means if we keep extracting our steam, if we keep extracting our gaseous H2O, then the system will counter this by, keep, by continually trying to produce more water. And in doing that, it will use up all the hydrogen and oxygen. So extracting water promotes a forward reaction. Again, also, if we wanted to, uh, to maximize our yield, we could increase the pressure. So if we increase the pressure, the system will try and decrease the pressure by going from three particles on this side to two particles on this side. So, that mean, so we can increase the pressure. Lastly, we can change the temperature. Now, because the reaction is exothermic, we can look at this and say that if we want to increase our yield, we want to increase our K value. And therefore, we want to decrease our temperature. This also makes sense with Le Chatelier's principle. Well, firstly, we'll explain why this works because we know that decreasing the temperature because it's an exothermic reaction according to this information here, decreasing the, temp the temperature means that the equilibrium constant will increase and will again maximize our yield. Alternatively, using Le Chatelier's principle, if we decrease the temperature, then the system will try and increase the temperature. And so the forward reaction is exothermic and therefore the forward reaction will increase the temperature again and oppose this decrease in temperature. So the two ways of explaining why decreasing the temperature 
will help this reaction uh, uh, have a larger yield. So there are three different ways, using three different concepts that we've learned, of increasing the yield of this straightforward exothermic reaction. And there we've learned how we can explain these facts about exothermic and endothermic reactions using Le Chatelier's principle.